This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, your sun power. This is a 6 p.m. Barbados Today update for Thursday, May the 15th, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. It's back to the bargaining table tomorrow morning for the disputing parties knocking heads over the controversial layoffs at the National Conservation Commission. The matter got the attention of the Friend of Stuart Cabinet today when Acting Labour Minister Maxine McLean presented a report on the talks she chaired last evening involving the NCC management, the Barbados Workers' Union and the National Union of Public Workers. There's no word on the Cabinet's position, but McLean has summoned the players to another round of talks tomorrow. Today, the BWU's Assistant General Secretary, Dwayne Paul, was expecting an early end to the dispute. We anticipate that we could get this wrapped up, as I said, um, before the end of the week. Um, we are pushing towards having this resolution before the end of the week, and as I said, when we left the meeting last night with the recognition that the problem lies in the breach of process, let's say that, that we can have this matter resolved uh, fairly, fairly soon. His colleague and UPW General Secretary Dennis Clark was anticipating a solution by the end of the day. The decision of um, the cabinet is the important thing. The cabinet can rectify this ill, this wrong that has been done, and uh, we depend on them to do that. If it is not done well, we've already alerted the workers, we've put them on standby, and um, we'll go from there. The Barbados Investors and Policyholders Alliance has some questions about the new payout proposal for CLECO policyholders, and it's calling for a meeting with CLECO Judicial Manager Deloitte to clarify a number of issues. Now, on the other arrangement, approved by the Friend of Stuart administration, holders of life, health and pension plans will receive the full value of their policies, while those with executive premium annuity policies will receive the value of their principal investment. BIPA President June Fowler says they need a clear meaning of principle as well as specific details on the nature of the annuities, including the proposed interest rate, term and early cash out options. The policyholders also want more details on the establishment of the new insurance company, NUCO, which will take over the insurance business. Sheffet Restaurants is staying at home at least for now. Managing Director Ryan Halut told the opening of its new Welch's location, the franchise is focused on expanding its brand locally, and he announced that restaurant number 16 is on the menu. Halut explains it's a deliberate business decision to increase its investment in the local economy given the prevailing economic woes. But right now we view is we're in a battle for the, making our country come out of this recession. We need all hands on deck in this country. We need our best employees in this country, focusing on this country and not. When you're in a war and you have an army, you go forward, you don't split up your army and you don't do that and send some to this country and some, we're not doing that right now. We're focusing on here and... There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, your sun power. To the region, in Jamaica, Senior Superintendent of Police James Forbes is facing six months in jail if he fails to pay an 800,000 Jamaica dollar fine by the end of the day. 
Today, Magistrate Stephanie Jackson Hazley handed down the order six days after Forbes was found guilty of perverting the course of justice. Forbes' charges stem from a meeting he admitted he facilitated between businessman Bruce Becknell and two police sergeants. The two officers had arrested the businessman in 2012 for allegedly offering them a bribe during a traffic stop in East Kingston. Further afield, a Sudanese court sentences a woman to hang for abandoning her religious faith after she married a Christian man. The judge also sentenced the woman to 100 lashes after convicting her of adultery because her marriage to a Christian man is not valid under Islamic law. In handing down the ruling, the judge told the woman she was given three days to recant but she refused to return to Islam, and therefore she will be sentenced to death by hanging. The woman insists she has always been a Christian. According to media reports, the woman is pregnant and the sentence will not be carried out for another two years. She expected to receive the lashes after recovering from childbirth. Amnesty International has condemned the sentence as appalling and abhorrent. That's been the 6 p.m. Barbados Today update. Join us again at 7 in the morning. Until then, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper and like us on Facebook to get more news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes,